Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Ross. This is part two of my video series on loading multiple images into your database. If you haven't watched part one yet, go watch that first and then come on back. All right, so in yesterday's video, we got our contact table all set to hold multiple images for a customer. We've got a field put in our contact form right there to display the picture. Now we're going to start actually putting some coding in here to get these pictures in from files on the hard drive. Now, the first thing I want to do is drop a status box on here so I can see what's going on. Remember, I got the status box out here. If you haven't watched my video where I build the Tech Help Free template, the status box is basically just, it's kind of like my replacement for message box. I hate message box and you know stuff just popping up in your face. So we are going to just literally copy this status box, copy, and we're going to paste it in here. And I'm going to put it down on the bottom. Now, I love using status box, especially when I'm developing because I can get all kinds of information and display it for myself. But then even after I'm done, this is a great thing for the user too, because the user can then see some stuff too, like, you know, copied four files or whatever you want it to say. I'll make it big right now. Usually I make it nice and large when I'm developing. And then when I'm done, I make it smaller and just put in here messages for the user to see. We all also are going to need to steal the code. If you go into the form module for the main menu, let me move this over here so you can see it better. There we go. We need to grab this status subroutine right here. So copy that. And if you want to, you can go view Project Explorer and then open up the contact form right there. That's the code for the contact form. There's nothing in here right now. And then just paste that in. So now that's that form has that sub in it. Okay. And it's, it's unique to the form. All right. So we got that. We're good there. We close and reopen the main menu. And in here now we have a little status box. We can put messages in here. All right. This is handy to see what's going on. Let's get this guy out of the way. That's just a hidden customer ID, which it's got to be on the form for some, for some other purposes, but I, we don't need to see it. That's why it's red. I'm going to put two buttons on here. One button is to open up the import folder. It just makes it handy to open up that folder because if you want to add you know pictures real quick, you hit the button, it opens up the folder, then you just drop the pictures in that folder. So let's go to form design. We're going to grab a command button, drop it right. Meow. Cancel the wizard. And we're just going to put on here, open import folder. And you can make that text smaller if you want. I like to go to nine point for stuff that's not important. And we can make the button a little bit smaller like that. Okay, so this is our open the import folder button. Let's change the name of it to open import, open import folder button. And let's right click on it, go to build event. Okay, what are we going to do in here? Now we're going to open up a folder in a file explorer window, right? That points to that folder location where our import folder is. So we can just easily drop files in there. So to run another program, we use the shell command. Shell says, I want you to just run something else. You can use it to run Word, Excel, Notepad, whatever. We're gonna use it to run Explorer. Now explorer.exe, it's part of Windows. It should be in your path. You don't have to specify the exe there. And then after that, we're going to put the full path to the import folder. Okay, but that's got to be inside of quotes. So that means we need double double quotes in here, right? That puts an actual literal quote in the string. Close that string. And current project dot path. That's our database folder. And import folder backslash and then we got to close the quotes in the string and then close the string see what we're getting there we're getting current project dot path so that's c colon backslash whatever database da, 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 slash import folder and that whole thing is inside of quotes and that's necessary okay and then one more parameter out here comma how do you want to see it i want to see vb normal focus otherwise you won't see it it just runs in the background hidden so make sure you put vb normal focus there okay Save it, give it a debug compile. I'm gonna close that. Let's close it, close it, open it, and hit the open import folder button. Boop. And it opened on my other screen, but it, it opened up down there. I got a two monitor set up, so this opened up to the right folder, but on my other screen. And yeah, you can control that and move windows around, but that's a whole different video. Okay, so here it is right there, good to go. Now we got a spot where we can very easily drop our files into. In fact, while I'm at it, we're at that point now. Let me open up the import folder again. 
and I'm going to copy a bunch of images to it so we got some stuff to work with. And there we go. Got a bunch of pictures in here that my routine can then import. Okay, we don't need this. Let's close that now. All right. Now we're ready to make a button to actually perform the import. So copy this button, copy, paste, right? And then we're going to put on here, import images. Yes, I know import is not exactly the right technical term because we're not importing stuff into the database. But as far as our users concerned, the database is importing the information for the images. Okay, just, okay, it's a training issue. All right, this will be our import button. Right click, build event. All right, here's where the code gets handy. And I'm gonna turn off this just to save some space. All right, the first thing is we're gonna set variables to where our images path and our import path is. So we need dim images path as a string and import path as a string. And we'll set those up as images path equals current project dot path and images and our import path where the stuff goes or where the stuff comes from current project dot path and import folder. And it's nice to use current project dot path because if your database moves, everything's relative, right? If you're, you know, if you're, if you're developing locally and it's in C colon backslash database, then you move it up to the server. Well, now the database path is, you know, up there, you can, you can change, you can change this current project dot path to something else. You could put it in a, you know, a global constant or whatever. Okay. All right. We're going to start off by telling the user something's happening, right? Status importing images. I'll put it in the status box. I'm going to want a counter so I know how many images were imported so I could tell the user, hey, you know, six images imported. So let's make a counter variable, right? Counter as long. And we'll start that off by saying counter equals zero before anything happens. Always initialize your variables. All right. Now, the next thing I want to do is get a list of the files in the import folder. And to do that, I'm going to use the dir command. Now, if you're familiar with DOS and Windows command prompts at all, you type in dir and it gives you a list of the files and folders that are in the file folder that you specify. All right, I open up a command prompt, type in dir, and there's all the files and folders in that folder. Okay, same thing in VB. Dir will just loop through all the files and folders in the current folder and bring them back to you one at a time. So let's make another variable over here. We'll call it file name as a string. And down here, I'm going to say file name, file name, file name equals dir. And then you want to specify the path that you want to search in. So it's going to be my import path with a star dot star on the end of it. That says, give me all of the files. And yes, I know I spelled import path wrong. And this is one of the reasons why when I'm typing, I like to do all lowercase. And I don't know why I haven't been. Because if I do this, I can immediately see it didn't camel case, right? It didn't capitalize automatically. And that would have just visually told me I typed it in. I spelled it wrong. I'd say 90% of my mistakes are spelling errors. <laughs> All right. And yeah, there are some other options for Dir. I cover them in my Access Developer course. You can look through directories. You can look through hidden files, all that kind of stuff. But this will just bring you back a list of the normal files that are in that folder, one at a time. Okay. And we can do that with a while loop. We'll say while file name is not an empty string because when you're out of files or if no files exist in the first place, then the dir command will return an empty string. All right, so you do your while loop, you put your while end down here and in the middle, when you're done doing whatever processing you're gonna do, you say file name equals dir, just dir by itself. And that will go out and get the next file using the parameters that you specified up top. Okay, that's all you got to do. And then in the middle here, you'll do some stuff. How about for now, we just status that file name so we can see what we're getting, right? That's what I like the status for. Instead of message boxing it, then you got to hit enter, 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 enter. Okay. All right, let's see what we get so far. Save it, debug, compile. Let's go back over here, close it, open it, and let's hit the button. Click. Oh, look at that. I'm going to zoom in so we can see it. Shift F2. All right, now remember the status box runs backwards, so importing images goes first, and then here is a list of all of the files in that folder. See that? That's pretty cool. 
right? Now we just have to process each one of these files. We got to figure out what kind of a file it is, JPEG, GIF, whatever, make sure it's allowed, right? We don't want there to be a text file or a PDF in there. We're going to ignore those. So we have to figure out the extensions. And then we have to write some code to simply add that as a record in the contact table. And we will start doing all of that in tomorrow's class. So tune in tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel for part three. Or of course, if you remember, you can watch it right now because I'm going to keep recording today and it'll be posted as soon as I'm done tonight. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part three. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsor, Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions. They're manufacturing experts specializing in Microsoft Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. Check them out at accessexperts.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing free four hours go watch it and okay okay a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course so I do now have a quicker Microsoft access for beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes and no I didn't just put the video on fast forward <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well now if you like level one level two is just a dollar that's it one dollar and that's another whole like 90 minute course Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay. Want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my access forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube.
Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels. Silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.